the main event of the evening. This fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record. 19 wins, six losses, one draw. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 232 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, Tanner, the bulldozer, Bowser! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding professional record, 29 wins, 19 losses, two no contests. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 244 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, presenting the former UFC heavyweight champion, Andre the Pitbull Olofsky. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Mark Smith. Mark Smith, our referee, and Andre Arlovsky with those patented fangs on the mouthpiece. He makes his 33rd UFC appearance tonight, 51st professional fight overall. He will do so tonight as a plus 270 underdog. Tanner Bozer, the minus 340 Tanner, favorite. Ready? Andre, ready? Fight's on. This fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Andre Arlovsky is in black. Tanner Bozer wearing that Canadian red. Here we go with a co main event. We have seen a physical transformation from Tanner Bozer dating to his UFC debut about 11 months ago. Has really leaned into the strength training. And the recent results for Bozer have been outstanding. Looks to a lot of people like a guy who will make a run to the rankings perhaps as early as next week. Arlovsky appeared to check that first offering from Bozer, Dom. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice check. Right off the bat, you got to stop those things. Man, the heavyweights start fighting, and everything gets quiet in here. Yeah, you just know it's one shot, and they both look like they're just loaded up, ready to fire the knockout shot, so you're just kind of waiting in silence for something to land. Bozer really did not want to talk about the future this week. He understands there is hype. It's different for him walking around in Alberta than it was several months ago. When you watch Bozer, you notice he wants you to throw so that he can move to an angle, move somewhere so he can counter you with his speed. That's what it looks like. See, once you throw, he'll throw. He's waiting to time you. Well, it's been a big night for the betting favorites and for any gambler out there since UFC 254. Favorites in the UFC, 29 and two, I'm being told. So, Bozer trying to continue that trend tonight. Arlovsky trying to buck it. Chalky, huh? My gosh, 29 and two. The underdogs, Tiago Moises and Robert Whitaker. Arlovsky goes high with a kick, partially blocked by Bozer. The respect of the power is definitely there for both gentlemen. That's why you're seeing the hesitation. Arlovsky has yet to land a strike here. Arlovsky goes low with a kick. Bozer kicks like an absolute mule. Trying to work his way into striking range. A little bit of a pedestrian start. Nice left hand from Bozer finds the mark. He just shifted to southpaw for a second and then came with an overhand left in the middle of the pocket. Bozer came to the UFC already with a lot of high level experience. Two time unified MMA heavyweight champion in Canada. Had 16 pro wins when he debuted last year. This is like what you like to call counter-striker versus counter-striker. 
This is what it looks like a lot. Two guys staring at each other, both looking to counter one another. Nobody wants to go first. Well, Dana White's Contender Series is can't miss action for any fight fan. You can watch the future stars of the sport today on ESPN+. Plus. And we've also got two more episodes this season, including next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, on ESPN+. Plus. A kick to a spinning back fist out of Andre. That's a new one. Arlovsky trying to make it three wins in his last four by springing the upset against Bozer. A lot of stance switching and footwork from Arlovsky early. Both guys staying far out at kick range. They're not moving into boxing range at all. Neither of them want to deal with the hands. So they're just touching each other with the kicks right now until they get comfortable with the speed is what I'm seeing. American top team's Mike Brown appears to like what he has seen from Arlovsky thus far. Patience, I would guess. And vision, right? Bows are starting to open up a little bit. Well, the first round was not what it could have been. Let's just I think say that's that. fair. I felt like the clock kind of moved pretty quickly, if I'm being honest, but yeah. not much in terms of that. Oh, there it is. Till that moment. And that's why they wait to throw. <laughs> Coming up in two weeks, two belts on the line at UFC 255. Davison Figueredo looking to make his first title defense a successful one. He takes on Alex Perez and then Shevchenko versus Maya for the women's 125-pound title. UFC 255, Saturday, November 21st. Available for purchase only on ESPN+. Plus. All right, here we go, round two. Dominic, any major takeaways from either corner? I thought it was interesting. Mike Brown wants at least more output at the end of the round, which he did not get after round one. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not sure what the cornermen are thinking. They just said, good job. They didn't throw anything the first round. Trevor Whitman, your thoughts on what has transpired and where we'll go from here, sir? Well, I'm actually interested in seeing what's going to happen this round. That, right at the end of the round, Andre landed a huge right hand. It clearly hurt Bozer. So I want to see if Bozer wakes up a little bit and right. uh, does a little bit more action. But again, he's a counter striker. Like Dom said, it's very hard to come into that power because that's why he got hit like that. Right. Andre is a veteran. He's going to sit back and wait for that right shot at this age. But this ain't a five-round fight. You know, you have to get moving and, and throwing something at a certain point. You can't wait the whole round. I mean, there's just a lot of respect for the hands of both these gentlemen because it as we saw as Whitman said at the end of the round it only takes one shot so they're just not wanting to eat each other's hands the kicks they seem to be able to see a little bit better at the range that they're at Andre Arlovsky UFC heavyweight champion back in 2005 2006 Nifty little kick a moment ago from Arlovsky. Now Bozer goes high. Trading right counter hands. right from Arlovsky. Bozer appeared to miss with his. There's really not much you could say except they're trying to find an opening for the one big shot. And that's why they're kind of staring at each other. They're both looking for one at a time instead of looking to throw two or three to miss and then land the big one at the end. They're not really flowing their combos. It's just one at a time. And as heavyweights, you see that a lot, but they're a little less active than normal. Maybe I'd like to see these guys go to the body a little bit more. Maybe that might open some things up following the kicks. Uh, that's about all I could say. Yeah, both guys landing at about a 30% clip, both below 30. But a nice connection by Arlovsky. You can see the power difference when Arlovsky lands, too. And I think that's what Bo uh, Bozer is very hesitant of. I mean, he landed in the chest right there, and <laughs> Bozer felt it. So, got to respect the power of Arlovsky. Nice. I do think the jab would help out a lot. Uh, they're both looking for power shots. And you've got to, just like you said, Dom, to the body. Like, why not jab to the body? Change levels. Uh, pick it back up. You can change, especially with Bozer. Bozer's so fast. Having a good jab is key. 
And when you're a counter striker, you have to piss someone off to make them fire at you right. to be able to throw those shots. Bolger's got those strong hooks, and if he throws a jab and gets Andre to come at him, then he can start throwing those power shots. Like, that's a shaky jab. You want to throw a jab that's committed, pushing someone back, and making them want to counter you. That's my thoughts. Arlovsky, late in his career, has been able to mute a lot of the naysayers, and he has landed some pretty significant shots here over the last several minutes. Under 90 seconds now to go in the round. Bozer presses forward. Yeah, like a double jab from Bozer or Arlovsky. One to the head, one to the body. That, even that would make a difference, but it's one at a time. So that's really what's causing the stagnation in this right now. Nice inside leg kick for Arlovsky. Arlovsky not biting on all of this movement from Bozer. Big shots traded there. You know, another thing is when they eat these shots, they can they can eat it on the leg and then fire forward after they eat it instead of backing up after they eat it. Those are more things that could happen between these two that could create some more offense. All right when the leg lands, follow it in and return back immediately. You don't just eat it and stare. Arlovsky has been in a lot of close fights over the last several years, a lot of distance fights as well. Last finish for him came against Travis Brown at UFC 187. That was in 2015. Nice body shot from Bozer. Good counter from Arlovsky. Five minutes left. Ooh, big shot. Andre, Andre, here. Bucket, 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 bucket. Round three is brought to you by P3, the official right, guys, protein snack Fight of home. UFC. Seemingly anybody's fight as we hit this third and final round. Mike Brown just looking for a little bit more output out of his pupil, Andre Arlovsky. A lot of feints out of Tanner Bozer. Watch the fingers, guys. And that right hand from Bozer appeared to partially clip Arlovsky, who counters with a low attack now. Now they're getting after it. And again, a check from Arlovsky as he raises that left leg. Now Arlovsky attacks the botter after Bozer went high and landed. Now Bozer starting to go in and out on that lead leg of Arlovsky. Yeah, see how Arlovsky just eats it and then stares. There's not like a counter back. Right when he touches you, you got an opportunity to hit him back in return. You see it a lot in Muay Thai. They never eat a kick and they don't kick back or throw something right. back. That's just the one little thing that could add to this too. Spinning back fist for Bozer, but Arlovsky able to raise those hands to block most of that. Nice jab from Tanner Bozer. Three minutes now to decide this one. Significant strikes on officially 32 26 for wow. Tanner Bozer. What's the total strikes? We got? That's pretty much that. So yeah. we're talking about 33 strikes in 15 minutes. Nice little flurry there from the former champion. No matter how big you are, you got more in you than 33 strikes in 15 minutes. Oh! One of the more seminal blows of the fight right there from Arlovsky. 
Yeah, Arlovski definitely landing the bigger shots, the, the heavier ones, I should say. Bowser a little bit more busy with the kicks and the touching on the outside. Trying to, looks like he's trying to pull Arlovski into a bigger shot than anything. Bowser just out of range with that one too. Trevor Whitman under two minutes to go, my friend. You know, at this point in your career, I'm not talk I'm talking about Arblowski. When is it time to take a little bit of a risk? I mean, you're at the tail end of your career. And again, sometimes wisdom in there makes you hesitant. But I would like to see him pull the trigger. I've seen him hurt him almost every time he's thrown a shot. And at this point in your career, sometimes you become wise. I tell fighters that the more fights you have, you become wise. You come, you're, you're subconsciously not throwing because you've been in so many wars. I would like to see him bite down and throw something. He's clearly hurt him. And again, that's me saying from the outside, a lot easier said than done. But I would be screaming in the corner right now, get on him. Dom, you seem to agree with all of that. Well, well said. I mean, a lot of times, that's just a coach's perspective. Seeing a lot of athletes that have been in wars is what that is. Oh! Nice right hand lands. And that one from Arlovsky back bows her up. You see some obvious damage on that lead leg of Arlovsky inside and out, and that one's not going to help matters, but Arlovsky has had some big moments, no doubt about it. Looked like a left-hand connection there from Bozer. Beautiful right-hand counter over the top. Nothing doing there for Bozer. Coming up on 30 seconds to go. A little bit of right hands trade there. Yep. See the splits on the strikes. 30 leg strikes have landed for Bozer. Definitely the leg kicks have him ahead on, on the strike count. It's hard to tell who's really winning this, in my opinion, though. Sure. Well, and thankfully, you are a commentator and not a judge. Your scorecard will not be required, but we will get you the three that matter after this.